Hi everyone, my name is Claire Tomlin. I'm a professor of electrical engineering and computer sciences at Berkeley. And this is the 21st module in a series of modules that we're recording to support the course EECS 221A, Linear System Theory at Berkeley. This module is about the matrix exponential, which is the state transition matrix of a time invariant linear system. Okay, so in a previous module, we talked about the state transition matrix, and we, we defined this fairly abstract matrix as with respect to um, a matrix differential equation as phi of t comma t zero. So it's an n by n matrix, um, which represents the solution of the matrix differential equation, x dot is equal to a of t x, where a of t is an n by n matrix. Um, and the reason it was important for us is because it allowed us to um, write out a closed form solution for the vector differential equation, a x dot is equal to a of t x of t plus b of t u of t, um, given some initial condition at x zero, x zero. Okay, so here phi uh, came into the solution, and we wrote out uh, the solution in terms of um, the contribution from the initial condition and the contribution from the input. But basically, when we wrote that, we said, OK, that's the closed form solution, yet it requires us to compute this state transition matrix. How do we, how do, we do that? Um, so we said, well, there are some classes of systems for which the state transition matrix is computable. I think in general, I mean, the only way to compute a state transition matrix is to go back and look at techniques for solving differential equations that depend on time. And we know that in some cases that's easy to do, but in some cases that can be hard to do. But if the, the differential equation is time invariant, it's linear time invariant, then we can use, um, we can do something nice, okay, which, which depends on the matrix exponential. So what is this matrix exponential? Let's define it. So suppose now we're looking at this case here. x dot of t is equal to a x of t plus b u of t. OK, so in particular, a and b do not depend on time anymore. They're not explicit functions of time, which mean that the, the elements of those matrices are all constants. OK, so we have the following claim. that the state transition matrix, and we'll, we'll do it like we did before. Let's ignore the contribution from the input for the time being. But the state transition matrix for the vector differential equation, x dot is equal to ax, so time invariant, is given by phi of t comma t zero is equal to e to the a t minus t zero. Okay, so this is the exponential function, but in the exponent is a matrix. Here's our matrix A in the exponent times this uh, difference in time, t minus t zero, where this uh, matrix e to the a t or this function of a matrix is given by the following expansion. So its series expansion is given as the identity plus a t plus a squared t squared over 2 factorial, et cetera. OK, so that's the infinite series expansion. OK, so you can see from this expansion a couple of things. Um, this is the n by n identity matrix. A is an n by n matrix, so it's multiplied by time, et cetera. So that tells us right away that the matrix exponential is an n by n matrix. Not surprising, as we know the state transition matrix is. Um, and it's given um, quite abstractly by its infinite series expansion. OK, so first of all, let's just make sure we understand this claim. So the state transition matrix is given by um, that, uh, that uh, format. So we can verify that. We have enough tools here to say, all right, well, does that make sense? So 
Um, if we look at the solution to that differential equation, where the solution is given in terms of this um, state transition matrix, what do we get? So we can check. And again, we're always invoking the same results that that vector differential equation has a unique solution for a given initial condition. So if we look at, um, if we look at the, this would be the candidate solution, e to the a t uh, minus t0 times x0. So we want to check, so this is, oh, all I've done is plugged in this matrix exponential in terms of the state transition matrix, and I want to check that this solves that differential equation, and it uh, gives me, it also solves the initial condition. So if we plug in the initial time, we get um, x of t0 is equal to e to the a t0 minus t0 x0, which is just... Um, e to the a0, x0. So if the time argument is 0, all of these terms go away, and you just get the identity. And x of t0 is equal to x0. OK, so the initial condition checks. Let's make sure the, the differential equation checks. So let's take the derivative of both sides of this differential equation. Um, the derivative of e to the a t is um, we can just look at it in terms of its infinite series expansion. Uh, the derivative of the identity is equal to the zero matrix. So x dot of t is equal to zero plus a plus um, a squared t plus a cubed t squared over 2 factorial, so the 3 comes down and that 3 factorial becomes a 2 factorial, etc., um, and then uh, times x0. No, sorry, x times x0. Yeah, that's right. So then we end up with, um, let's just factor out the a here. So that becomes a times i plus at. And we end up with just the definition of the matrix exponential, a squared t squared over 2 factorial. So I'm just factoring out an a and finding that the result here is a times x of t. OK, so it satisfies both the initial condition and it satisfies the differential equation. OK, so our claim is true that um, if we trust this uh, definition of the matrix exponential and we can you know, take derivatives of that infinite series expansion as we did, then um, that is indeed the solution to that time invariant differential equation. All right, so let's, with that in mind and with that infinite series expansion in mind, let's go back and look at some properties of that matrix exponential. So let's give ourselves some more room here. OK, so properties. Properties of e to the at. Uh, well, the first thing, and we've used this already, is if we look at e to the 0, so this is an n by n matrix, e to the 0 is just going to be the identity from the uh, expansion here. Um, if we look at e to the a times t plus s, both scalars, that's equal to e to the a t times e to the a s. So that's the matrix product of those two terms. Um, however, if you look at e to the a plus b, two n by n matrices times t, that's only equal to e to the a t times e to the b t if a and b compute, uh, commute. So if a commutes with b, then you get this product. Otherwise, that's not generally true. OK, so that's an, important, um, that's an important identity. The inverse, e to the a t inverse, so it's an n by n matrix. That inverse always exists, and it's equal to e to the minus a t. 
which is interesting. Uh, the derivative, so this is something that we've done. So you can see these and you can derive them from the infinite series expansion. But the fifth property is if we take the derivative d by dt of e to the at, that's equal to a e to the at. That just, again, comes from the infinite series expansion. Um, and then finally, if you look at the matrix differential equation, so let's use capital X as we did before. So if you have an n by n matrix X of t, then the solution to the matrix differential equation, z, uh, capital X of t, is equal to a x dot of t is equal to a x of t, with the initial condition being the identity matrix. That solution is given by x of t is equal to e to the a t. This follows directly from our definition of the, of the state transition matrix, because this is a special case of the state transition matrix for this time invariant system. OK, and so all of these properties we can check from the infinite series representation that we've been given for e to the at. OK, but, but how do we compute it? So let's end today's module just by talking about the computation of e to the at. And this is, in general, hard. So computing e to the at is, in general, hard. But it's, I would say, it's, in general, easier than computing the, state, the general state transition matrix. Um, you might be tempted to think about computing it using its infinite series representation. That is not generally a good idea. So generally, we would only use the infinite series representation, um, so infinite series representation to compute it, representation. Um, I would say do this only if it's clear that A is nilpotent, so that for some small integer, uh, k, a to the k is equal to 0. And then your infinite series truncates after a few terms, and you're able to just build up what the, um, the representation is. So only if a is nilpotent. And even then, it's not clear you would use that. So, so for example, if a is, um, so if it's got lots of zeros, for example, you might check. Here, in fact, a squared is just the 0 matrix. And so you can compute e to the at as i plus at and all the other terms, a squared, et cetera, they all go to 0 because a squared is equal to 0. So it's just equal to 1, 1, 0, 1. Um, generally, we compute the, the, uh, the matrix exponential using the following um, technology. We, we think about um, the matrix differential equation, x dot is equal to ax. And we think about the situation um, in which we're looking at an initial condition here, which is the identity. And we take the Laplace transform of that. So let's use x hat to represent the Laplace transform of x. So the Laplace transform of that derivative is x, uh, s times x hat minus x hat of 0. And on the right-hand side, we just have a x hat of s. And so what we can do then is bring x hat of s onto the a x hat of s onto the left hand side, bring x zero onto the right hand side, and simplify to come up with x hat of s is equal to s i minus a inverse. And we're assuming all along that this inverse exists. It does exist, but we haven't shown that yet. So um, the inverse of si minus a. So x of s is equal to si minus a inverse. Um, and so then that, that's x hat of s. So that tells us that x of t is going to be the inverse Laplace transform of si minus a inverse. So you compute, you take your matrix a, 
You subtract it from a matrix which is S times I, so that's an N by N matrix whose diagonal elements are all S's. And you compute the inverse of that matrix, and then you take the inverse Laplace transform of that matrix, and that should give you X of T. From our property six on the previous slide, the properties of the matrix exponential, we know that X of T, by definition, the solution to that matrix differential equation starting at the identity is E to the AT. Therefore, we have a way of determining E to the AT. It's the inverse Laplace transform of SI minus A inverse. All right, so let's go back to this example here. Uh, here, A is equal to 0, 1, 0, 0. So we have that uh, SI minus A is just S1, S minus 1, 0, S. And, um, and now we can take the inverse of that matrix. So this is why, in general, this, this technique could be hard, or in general, computing the matrix exponential is hard um, because of the following. So let's take uh, SI minus A inverse. Okay, so that's easy because it's a two by two matrix. So it's just one over S squared, one over the determinant times S, S, 1, S, 1, 0, S. Okay, so it's 1 over S, 1 over S squared, 0, um, 1 over S. And so that tells us that E to the AT is going to be the inverse Laplace transform of SI minus A inverse, which is, and so here we have to remember our inverse Laplace transforms. Um, but sometimes it's so easy we can do it by inspection. So here we end up with e to the t. This is t, e to the t, 0, and e to the t. Okay, so um, we end up with uh, e to the a t just through um, doing that inverse Laplace transform. Okay, so what is hard here? Well, in this two by two case, what is hard didn't really come out. We, um, in general though, if we had an n by n matrix, you would have an nth order polynomial. The determinant is gonna be an nth order polynomial. And so in order to compute the inverse Laplace transform, you have to have an algorithm for factoring that nth order polynomial. And, and that's what's hard. It's that, it's that factorization problem. So even if you could compute the inverse easily, which typically you could, you have to be able to take the inverse Laplace transform. And the only way we know how to do that is by factoring this nth order polynomial. Okay, so we have, um, Actually, what did we do wrong here? I'm looking at this kind of funny because I think I took the inverse Laplace transform incorrectly. So let's just go back and check. Let's do a check. So this is why it's always good to remember your inverse Laplace transforms. So here we have, we're taking the inverse Laplace transform of one over S. Um, that is not e to the T as I had, it's just one. And one over S squared is just the ramp T. So it's actually, just given by the following. Much simpler than I had, and, um, and a good note as to why you should remember, or how, like why you should remember your inverse Laplace transforms. Um, and of course this makes sense because it complies with the solution that we computed using the infinite series representation. So if we, um, if we, as I said, if we had a, a larger system, like a three by three system, then the polynomial would be a third order. The determinant would be a third order polynomial. We have to factor that, bring it in, do a partial fraction expansion in order to easily compute the inverse Laplace transform. Okay, but having said that, this is still the standard method for computing the matrix exponential, is using the formula that the matrix exponential is equal to the inverse Laplace transform of SI minus A inverse. And assuming that we can take that inverse Laplace transform, it gives us a fairly standard and straightforward way of computing the matrix exponential. Which I, I guess even though it's hard, it's um, much more straightforward than the time varying case where we were trying to compute the state transition matrix in general. 
Okay, so what have we done in this module? We've presented the linear time varying, um, the, the linear time invariant case, and we presented the concept of a matrix exponential as the state transition matrix for the linear time invariant case. We looked at its properties, and then we, we briefly presented how you might compute that, mat that um, matrix exponential using the inverse Laplace transform. Thanks very much.